Welcome Viking Warriors to Valheim. Using the wishbone you got from Bone Mass, the hunt for silver in the mountains begins. Up high in the mountains, you face wolves, drakes, golems, and the Fenrir. It can be quite a dangerous place. Fighting a flying ice dragon can be quite intimidating, but today I have five ways you can use to defeat the next boss, Motor. Finding Motor's lair may be difficult. You may have to explore several forts located in the mountains before even finding one of her Vegvisirs. To summon Motor, you need to bring three dragon eggs to her altar. They are heavy and weigh 200 each, and they can't be transported via portal. Likely, you'll be bringing ones that you find from the other mountains, but you may also be lucky enough to have three dragon egg nests on the same mountain as Motor. Before fighting Motor, you should clear out the rocks and trees nearby and flatten the area as much as you can. Visibility and mobility are important. Motor has two breath attacks. The one that she uses from the sky can be pretty harsh. You can try dodging it, or hiding behind something when she uses it, but a reliable strategy is to use the hoe to create a solid pillar of raised ground. The advantage of doing this is that this pillar is completely indestructible. No matter how many times she attacks, it will never go away, and it's small enough that it won't get in the way that much. Now that everything's ready, let's get started. Method number one is using melee with a shield, as well as a bow for ranged. When you start the fight, you should have a full set of upgraded wolf armor, a wolf fur cape for frost resistance, a silver shield, and some health and stamina meads. While Motor is flying, she will occasionally fire a barrage of ice bolts. Hide behind the pillar we made to avoid damage. Then break the crystals that form so they don't get in your way. After she lands, her attacks include an ice breath, swiping her claws, and biting you. With a fully upgraded silver shield, you can block all of these attacks. There aren't many benefits to parrying here, so don't worry about that too much. You can also dodge roll all of these attacks, including the Ice Breath if you have the timing right. When she flies back into the air, you can try hitting her with her bow, but she moves around a lot. You have to be a pretty good archer to land those shots. For ranged attacks, I'm using a new Draugr Bow, which adds poison damage to my attacks. As for the types of arrows I'm using, the new Obsidian arrows you can make are ideal. Even though Motor is weak to fire damage, fire arrows will do less damage overall. Since Motor picks fairly random locations to land, sometimes she'll get herself stuck on something like this. If this happens, just take advantage of the situation and keep firing your bow. This isn't exactly uncommon for this encounter, and it's largely based on the world that was generated for you. Let's talk about our new silver weapons for a moment. 
When you discover silver, there are seven new melee weapons for you to unlock. The silver knife is decent with its fast attacks, but Motor has a large collision box that pushes you back. The short range of the knife may cause you to miss a lot of attacks. The spear is pretty decent, but it consumes a lot of stamina quickly. If you thought the new Frostner Mace would be good, you're incorrect. The Frostner Hammer mostly does spirit and ice damage. Motor is fully immune to both of those damage types, so don't bother using it. In the end, I find that the Silver Sword is the best weapon for this encounter. Its damage is pretty decent, and its range will help land most attacks. The other two weapons I won't be showing you today are the Flesh Rippers and the Crystal Battle Axe. These are both two-handed weapons, so you can't use a shield to block her attacks. I also found their damage to be not that impressive for the trade-off. As long as you put the time to craft in good armor, a silver sword, and a silver shield, the motor fight is pretty simple. Upon defeat, you get Motor's Trophy and Dragon Tears, which will help you craft the Artisan Table. If you don't feel like meleeing and would rather just use your bow, we can cheese the AI a little bit for method number two. Before spawning Motor, dig a trench under the altar. This is kind of similar to what we did back with the Elder. Make sure you dig as close to the altar as you can. You want the gap to be small enough that Motor won't fit neither will her ice bolt attack. It's also a safe idea to dig around the altar so you can change positions if you need to. With our trench finished, it's time to test it out. There's no rush to get into the trench, but once she starts using her abilities, it's time to hide. When she uses her Ice Bolt attack, get down into the trench to avoid it. If you want to play it safe, you should stay down below, but I decided to climb back out for some extra shots. When she lands, she'll start using her Ice Breath and melee abilities. If you're not at a safe angle like I was, the Ice Breath could still hit you. Once she gets into position above you, none of her ground attacks can reach you. Now it's just a matter of shooting her with your bow until she's dead.
after some time passes, she'll fly back into the air again. Once she's back up there, she'll try using her Ice Bolt attack. Make sure you're close to the walls to avoid it. With the right angle, a couple bolts can still reach you down here. Once again, she decided to glitch on the side of the mountain. At this point, you have two choices. You can either safely stay in the trench and wait for her to land nearby, or you can hop out of the trench temporarily and shoot her so you're not wasting any time. Eventually, she places herself back on top of my trench, allowing me to freely shoot her again. Do you like the new Fenris set I have? You can make it from the loot you find in the mountain caves. It's also time to act like a wolf for method number three. Have you mastered taming in Valheim yet? We're going to get several tamed wolves to do the work for us this time. Taming wolves can be pretty challenging. The best method is to dig a hole in the mountains and trick two wolves into falling into it. Once fully tamed, you can breed an army. If you want one or two star wolves like me, those wolves will only spawn at night, and they're significantly more dangerous. For this method, I've tamed an army of 12 wolves. Let's see how well they do. On your trek up the mountains, some wolves can get stuck or lost, or killed by creatures along the way. Be careful on your trip. Once I got to the top, I placed them in a small pen to keep them safe until it was time to attack. While motor is in the air, the wolves can be targeted by motor's ice bolts. 
just run in circles to avoid the first few blasts. Once she lands, let the swarm begin. It's not easy to plan this, but you need the wolves to be spread out. It only takes two or three hits for Motor to kill any of the one-star wolves. However, if all goes according to plan, she dies incredibly quickly. And this was with me barely touching her. If you want to duplicate this method, then you need to bring at least 12 one-star wolves at a bare minimum. Maybe 15 would be better. Did I mention how Motor is weak to fire damage? But I already said fire arrows are weaker than obsidian, so how are we going to do this? For method number four, what we're going to do is dig a pit and place four bonfires inside of it. This pit needs to be no deeper than four meters, or the length of one large log pole. This is because a bonfire becomes four meters tall after you light it. Once you've finished digging it, try to fit all four bonfires in the corners. Bonfire placement is incredibly picky, so if they don't fit, you'll either have to spend more time flattening the ground or make your pit a little larger. Also, make sure you have a little space in the middle where you can safely fit without being burned. For the last step, fill the top of the pit with floor tiles. The idea is you want it to be completely covered. Once you summon Motor, get into the pit and fill the last hole you left for yourself. Motor will actually not use her Ice Bolt attack unless she has line of sight. Since she can't see you, she'll simply fly around for a bit. Eventually, she'll just land right on top of you. Once she lands, light the bonfires and get roasting. While she's up there, her melee attacks also won't hit. Now you just have to wait for her to burn to death. However, it's kind of boring to watch me repair four bonfires and watch a mysterious health bar go down, so let's play with this. Using a few cheats, I've replaced the wooden floors with cage floors. If you wanted to duplicate something like this, it would probably take you 50 iron bars to do this. Let's start the encounter and watch the light show. As you can see, Motor is flying around and not attacking, despite knowing exactly where we are. When she lands, we start the fires and she just sits on top of them. The only thing you need to make sure of is that the bonfires are constantly repaired. In the event her ice breath damages anything, make sure those floor tiles above are also repaired. She'll probably fly back into the air again for a bit, but this is only temporary. She'll land back onto our large barbecue pit in a matter of time anyways.
After a couple of minutes, our barbecue motor is complete. I'm not going to call this last method reliable, or will I even recommend it, but hopefully it can inspire others to come up with some ingenious ideas. For method number five, we're going to build a hole similar to our last method, but instead, we're going to use it to trap motor and prevent her from flying. First, dig a hole at least six meters deep. This is the height of one large and one short log pole. It'll need to be a little larger than the last hole we built. It has to be wide enough for a dragon to fall in. Lastly, you need an escape route to get out of here once motor falls in. Like before, when you spawn motor, get into the trap. The first step is to wait for motor to land directly on top of it. Once she lands, you want to break the floor tiles to get her to fall in. Don't be conservative about this step. You might have to destroy a lot of floor tiles to get her to fall. Once she lands, run out through your emergency exit. You have a limited time before she flies again, so now you have to rebuild the floor tiles that were there to keep her from flying out. As long as you can build a bridge near the middle, you should be fine. If she tries to fly, do not get in front of her. At close range, each ice bolt does about 300 damage, so getting hit by multiple or all of them will kill you. Once she's trapped, you can basically kill her however you want. While trapped underground, you can shoot her with your bow. Or you can try to melee her claws that peek out of the ground. When she flies though, melee her from behind. If she starts turning, always prioritize getting behind her. This was a little tricky to set up, but now I've basically crippled the boss. I couldn't really come up with a better execution for this method, but if anyone has any better ideas, let's hear about it. And that concludes five different methods you can use to defeat the fourth boss in the mountains, Motor. Defeating Motor and hanging her head at the sacrificial stones will grant you a special power that forces the wind to come from behind while you're sailing. This will make traveling around the world much easier, especially since the wind always seems to be blowing in the opposite direction of where I want to go. I hope you enjoyed this guide. If Motor's giving you trouble, I highly recommend the fourth method, which I would call the bonfire barbecue strategy. Next up, we're headed to the plains. I'll see you there.